Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the birthday of Prince. This video has been uploaded on the 7th of June 2018, which would have been Prince's 60th birthday. As you may be aware from previous videos of mine, Prince is my favourite artist and I believe he is the greatest musician who has ever walked the face of this planet. You may disagree, that's entirely up to you, but in my opinion that is the fact. What this video is, is a little tribute. Now Prince stopped celebrating his birthday when he became a Jehovah's Witness, but that's not going to stop me celebrating it. I'm glad he existed on this planet for as long as he did. So for his 60th, I'm going to do 60 at 60. And these are 60 of Prince's songs that I believe the casual fan would appreciate him further if he, they listened to. Yeah, so what these are, are tracks, officially released tracks, they're all tracks that are available to either buy or legally download, um, those are on his albums, singles and officially released live material, be it video or albums, and I shall be presenting them in chronological order, and yeah, they're basically, once you've heard the hits, you know, maybe you've bought one of the compilations, where do you go next? These are the tracks that, in my opinion, and many of you will have different tracks that you prefer or think are more appropriate, but this is my 60 deeper cuts, maybe we could call them. There are a few singles on here, but they're either lesser known ones or alternate versions of them, as you will see. But anyway, that's enough preamble. So this is Prince's 60 at 60, and the first song, is from his debut album For You and it is his version of I Feel For You. Now you'll almost all be aware of Shaka Khan's cover, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, of I Feel For You which is a great version and deserved to be a number one hit which of course it was. Most of you will probably be aware that it was written by Prince, not all of you will be aware that he actually it started off as his song it's not one he wrote specifically for Shaka, unlike a lot of tracks like Manic Monday. Or that he didn't, in the first place, write that for the Bangles, but it was written specifically for another artist and it was the Bangles who had a hit with it. So yes, um, I Feel For You appeared on his debut album. Fantastic version of the song. I love the bass line on it. It's worth listening to just for bass line. They more or less copied the bass line on Shucker's version. Um, so yes, first track I highly recommend is Prince's version of I Feel For You. Then second up from his second album, self-titled Prince album, and one of my favourite Prince tracks, that's Bambi. It says he'd already gone a bit heavy rock with um, I'm Yours on his debut album, but here he's back in the heavy rock version, probably his definitive heavy rock song, and that's Bambi. Um, it's a song about converting a lesbian, so it's not very PC. Um, but it's a great fun little song and the guitar work on it is excellent. It's a song Prince loved playing. He played it throughout his career in his live concerts, even after he became a Jehovah's Witness and he stopped singing the more risky songs, or risque songs rather, um, he still would perform Bambi. As so it's one of my, it's my joint favourite Prince song. Absolutely love it. That's Bambi from Prince. Okay, third track from third album, is the Dirty Mind album, classic album, his first truly great album, and practically any track I could recommend, but um, I will recommend When You Were Mine, which is another song that Prince loved playing and he played live throughout his career. He played it so often you'd think it was a big hit single, but it wasn't. Uh, just brilliant song, brilliant guitar work, uh, funky, rocky, fun lyrics. Great song, When You Were Mine. Uh, track four was actually a single. This is from Controversy. Controversy. Say it how you will. I always think it depends on the sentence, so when you're saying it as a title, Controversy is how it's sung, so I suppose that's really how it should be pronounced. But yes, Controversy album, not his best album. Um, it's sort of a Dirty Mind part two, but 
without quite the quality of the songs. But uh, the title track's excellent, sexuality's very good, um, Jack You Off's a lot of fun, but I am going for what did, was a single, and that's Let's Work. Um, he originally recorded it as Let's Rock to cash in on a dance craze that was doing the rounds in late 1980, I think it was. Um, but by the time it was released, that fad had been and gone, so he changed it to Let's Work. Another song he's played regularly throughout his career, up-tempo, poppy, funky, rocky, as a lot of Princess stuff is, but it wasn't a huge hit, um, so lots of people wouldn't be aware of it. Um, don't think it's on the compilations. Might be on one of the hits ones. Don't listen to the compilations very often, so I lose track of what's actually on them. But it's certainly one that needs checking out. Then we move on to his first proper breakthrough album, 1999. Now, obviously, there's the classics on here. 1999, Little Red Corvette, Delirious. Um, I'm going for, again, a track that was a single in some places. And when the album was originally released in Europe, was criminally left off the album to make room so, so it would all fit on a single album. And that's DMSR. Um, for those of you who don't know, it stands for Dance Music Sex Romance. And it's pretty much Prince's mantra. That is what his life revolved around. Um, very funky. Again, it's a track he would perform regularly throughout his career. What can I say? Yeah, check it out. Okay, the sixth track I recommend is Irresistible Bitch, which is a B-side of Let's Pretend We're Married from the 1999 album. Uh, a classic Prince B-side, a fan favourite. Uh, when Prince toured the Act 3 tour, sorry, Act 2 tour in 1993, um, he put out feelers with Controversy magazine, which was the official fan club. Um, and they had little slips of paper in the magazine and you could fill in the tracks you wanted to hear him play on the tour. And two B-sides made the cut, one of which we'll discuss later, but the first of which was Irresistible Bitch. Um, it's a funny song, it's very funky. Um, yeah, just brilliant song. Okay, now we move on to Purple Rain. Now, obviously, there's Purple Rain, there's When Doves Cry. I'm actually going to choose one of the big hit singles as one of my picks, but first, my the premium track, in my opinion, from Purple Rain, and that's for Beautiful Ones. Recorded entirely on his own, and, oh, it's just gorgeous. Again, a song you would play regularly, a huge fan favourite. Uh, one of his, not his best ballads. Just beautiful, beautiful song, the emotion at the end. I know the screaming can put the casual listener off, but it's just pure emotion coming out of him. Just, yes, genius. Beautiful ones. Then also from Purple Rain-ish, um, it's Let's Go Crazy, but it's the Special Dance Mix, which is also known as the Extended Version, so it's the 12-inch version. Um, it's basically the version as heard in the film. So if you've seen Purple Rain, it's got the piano breakdown in the middle, which I just think is funky as hell. Let's Go Crazy is probably the song that made me a Prince fan. I got Purple Rain album as part of my five introductory cassettes from Britannia Music Club. Stuck Purple Rain on, press play. Let's Go Crazy started. Wow. Got to the guitar solo at the end and that was it. Rewind, play, rewind, play, rewind, play. Ran downstairs, mum, listen to this. Rewind, play, rewind, play. That was it, I was hooked. So yes, the extended version, special dance mix of, of Let's Go Crazy. Okay, and then the first live track I'm gonna pick is from the Prince of the Revolution live uh, video, which recently came out on DVD as part of the Purple Rain Deluxe version and it was a uh, recording of a concert on, I think it was the 30th of March 1985, from memory, at Syracuse, um, that was broadcast around the world and then released on home video. Initially, I think it's two cassettes, and then eventually as one. And as I say, it's just been released on DVD. And the track I'm going to pick, it's uh, the version of Possessed on that recording. 
Um, it was a B-side from the 1999 era, and my mind's gone blank as to what track it was a B-side of. What was it? No, it wasn't a B-side. Ignore that. It was an outtake from that era. It was sort of recorded in between 1999 and Purple Rain, and the original version of it is now on the Purple Rain Deluxe version. But the live version is totally different. It's on the um, cover to the video. It's in brackets, it says dedicated to James Brown. And it's, whereas the um, studio recording is quite a slow hypnotic track, the live version is just funky as hell. Really fast, quick moving, James Browny, genius. So yeah, that's Possessed, the live version from Prince of the Revolution Live. Moving on to Around the World in, in a Day, and track 10 of my 60 is Condition of a Heart. I could easily have picked Raspberry Beret. It's possibly my favourite Prince single. No, that's a lie. It's my second favourite Prince single. Um, I'm tempted to pick the 12 inch version, but it doesn't add that much to the song. So I'm going to leave Raspberry Beret because everybody knows the song. And as I say, I'm going for Condition of a Heart, which is a beautiful ballad. Again, slow, hypnotic, it gradually builds, beautiful story, beautiful vocals, brilliant. And then also from Around the World in a Day ish is the extended version of America. It's just called America on the 12 inch, but it is 21 minutes and 46 of live America. And it is just so funky. It's, it just highlights Prince of the Revolution live perfectly. His control over the band, their um, synchronicity with him, it is just brilliant. So yes, the 12 inch version, just called it America of America. Track 12 is a B-side from the Around the World and Day era, and it's Raspberry Beret's B-side, She's Always In My Hair. This is the other B-side that made the Act 2 tour um, set list. Again, as I say, a fan favourite, uh, guitar heavy, but not heavy rock, but it just features a lot of guitar track. Um, again, brilliant lyrics. It, it's just getting repetitive because it's Prince and it's all brilliant. And what can I say other than brilliant? But yeah, just um, definitely a brilliant, uh, a, a great track to check out. That's She's Always In My Hair, Raspberry Beret's B-side. Track 13 from Parade, which is a soundtrack to Under the Cherry Moon. Again, a classic album, sort of from maybe 1999, definitely Purple Rain, through to Love Sexy at least. It's just a, a purple period for Prince. And I mean, he never released a duff track throughout his career, in my opinion, but certainly then he was at his peak. And then also, in my opinion, in the mid-90s, he was at the peak, which we will get to. But yes, so um, Under Cherry Moon soundtrack, a Parade. The uh, Kiss, obviously, was the huge single from that. But I'm going to go for a couple of tracks. First up, I'm going to go for Another Lover Hole in Your Head. It's all one word, as you can see. Um, I was going to use the B word again. A magnificent track. The harmonies... Uh, the backing vocals sort of preempt his lyrics and without actually playing it to you I can't describe but it is just genius. Uh, again funky and poppy and oh just wonderful work. Uh, it was a single but it wasn't a huge hit wrongly. And then the second track from Parade I'm going to choose is a track that has special meaning nowadays. And um, that sometimes it snows in April. Uh, in the film, it was the, the death song for his character, Christopher Tracy. As you are probably aware, Prince died in April 2016. And it did snow in Minneapolis on the day he died. So, as I say, extra poignancy nowadays. It's a beautiful ballad anyway. Um, again, a song he's played live a few times. Or on a few tours throughout his career. Just just wonderful, wonderful songs. Sometimes it snows in April. Moving on to what many people consider Prince's best album. I don't quite agree with that. I think production wise it could do with a bit bit more oomph. Um, 
but it is genius. It's, it's a five star album, certainly. That's Sign of the Times. Um, the tracks I'm going to go for, I can't read my notes now because they're behind the camera. Let me move it over. That's better. So the first track I'm going to go for is The Cross. Uh, this is a, a, a very simple, it's almost a ballad I suppose, initially. Just two chords. Uh, uh, I've forgotten it's that one and that one. What's that? A minor and E? Or E and A, a or something like that. E minor and A, whatever those two are. Um, mine has gone blank. Starts off very slowly, just Prince and his guitar singing a song about, although it's a sentiment I don't necessarily agree with, but how um, love of God will, will save you. Um, and halfway through the song, it really kicks up a gear. Again, it's just those two chords, but now played um, with distortion and drums coming in and. Um, horns and so on it just builds and builds and builds and then there's some terrific guitar work again a song Prince played quite a bit for a few years following its release in 87 then when he had his conversion to Jehovah's Witnesses he slightly rewrote it as the Christ because um, Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the cross they believe he was um, Jesus was killed on a Stauros I think it is which is an upright pole or stake I personally, I don't see why it matters. Um, so he, he reworded it slightly as the Christ. The song was still excellent, but it was just unnecessary, really, to rename it. But yes, that's the Cross from Sign of a Time. The second Sign of a Time track I'm going to recommend um, is... I'm going to recommend the version from a Sign of a Time's movie. And it's actually two of the tracks from the album combined. And that's Forever In My Life and It. Uh, the album version of it isn't great. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not a magnificent song. But played with Forever In My Life, which is a magnificent song, um, as part of this live version, wow. So it starts off, it's Prince on an acoustic guitar, and it's sort of almost done in a gospel-y sort of style, and then all his band are with him and they join in on the vocals, and it's just one of Prince's best vocal performances, I think. I heartily recommend you check it out, all of this, that's the whole point of this video. But yes, Forever In My Life and It from A Sign Of A Times movie. Then we move on to, and I'm putting it in here because of chronologically when it was recorded, from a Black Album, which as you may know, it's an album Prince recorded, which was going to be released with no credits or anything, so not credited to Prince, it was just going to be an all black cover, and it was mainly songs he wrote just as party music for Sheila E's birthday party um, with a few other tracks he'd worked on. And then at the last minute, possibly due to an ecstasy trip, he decided it was a bit too dark and he didn't want it associated with him. So he pulled the release at the last minute at his own expense. Uh, a few copies survived and became uh, the source for many, 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 many bootleg versions. And then, as part of Prince's contract negotiations in the 90s, trying to get out of his Warner Brothers contract, he allowed them to release it as a limited version on CD in 1994. But as I say, it was originally meant to come out after Sign of a Time, so that's where I'm putting it. And the track I've chosen from it is Super Funky Califragia Sexy. Brilliant, really funky, fun song. Nonsense lyrics, but just what Prince does best. Just e funking the hell out. Brilliant song. Again. Okay, and then for moving on to that, and this is where I cheat a bit, track 18. It's trying to decide what to put in from Love Sexy. Certainly one of my favourite Prince albums. And as you may know, the album on CD, certainly the initial release, um, was all one track. He refused to segment it into songs. So therefore I'm refusing to segment it into songs. So track 18 is Love Sexy, the album. Yes, it's cheating, I don't care. Track 19 is a B-side that Prince actually uses a B-side twice. Uh, first of all from The Arms of Orion from the Batman soundtrack. And then he also used it as a B-side to the Diamonds and Pearls track Insatiable. 
Um, a track's called I Love You In Me. Love this song. It's very saucy, but a beautiful ballad. Uh, again, Prince's vocals on it are amazing. It's, just, it's a simple song, but it's beautiful. Um, he did play it live on the Live Experience Tour. And it was featured on my hits for B-sides, so it's quite easy to find. But yeah, I Love You and Me, excellent song. Sticking with the Batman soundtrack, uh, I'm going for Electric Chair. Brilliant guitar work on this. Very heavy, but funky and fun and poppy. Fun lyrics. Electric Chair. And track 21 uh, for my 60 is another one from Batman era, 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 and it's the video mix of Party Man. Party Man's a brilliant song, so funky, so fun, and the video version, which is even longer, and has got the bit with Candy Doll for when I need trombone, a dog is handy, but when I want sax, I call Candy. And yeah, it's just, again, it's another perfect example of Prince playing within a song. So yes, track 21 out of 60 is Party Man with the video mix. Moving on to Graffiti Bridge and uh, two tracks I love from that but one of them I'm going for a live version which was released later so we'll get to that. But the other track that I'm going to choose is Elephants and Flowers which is not a song I hear talked about much but I just think it's great fun. Um, it's just a catchy pop song, brilliant musicality, the instrumentation on it's brilliant. I must find another word for brilliant, but I'm not going to do so. As you were gathered, it's brilliant. I sound like I'm in my fast show. But yes, uh, Elephants and Flowers from Graffiti Bridge. Then we're starting to get back into a purple period for Prince as we start with the Diamonds and Pearls album. The first album to properly credit the new power generation. It's a huge favourite album of mine. It's the first of his albums that I bought on the day of release. It was it was when I was really starting to get into Prince. And um, the first time I saw him live was on the Diamonds and Pearls tour. So it's got a huge soft spot in my heart. The singles from it, Get Off, Cream, Diamonds and Pearls, uh, Money Don't Matter Tonight, Strolling, all excellent. Uh, but the tracks I'm going to choose are Willing and Able, Tempted to Go for the Video Version, which was recorded as live, which is brilliant, but I'll go for I'll go for the album version. Many people, many fans, um diss Tony M's rapping on Prince's songs. I can see why. I mean he's not the greatest rapper who's ever lived, but as part of a song, I think he fits in really well. And he's rapping Willing and Able and indeed, did I go for it? No, ignore that. He's rapping Willing and Able is just, you know, it just fits the song perfectly. I nearly went for Live for Love as well, which he also raps in and again, which I think fits perfectly. But yeah, Willing and Able, it's, uh, it's sort of a swingy, I suppose, type, funky type song. Uh, again, great vocals from Prince on it. Uh, the other one from the Diamonds and Pearls era is actually, it ended up being a B-side to both Get Off and Cream. It was originally meant to be on the album, um, and it was replaced by Get Off at the last minute. And um, that's Horny Pony. I love this song. Again, it's another just a fun, funky, poppy type song uh, about a dance that Prince has invented called the Horny Pony. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just fun and funky and brilliant. Moving on to the Symbol album, and again a, a big favourite of mine, and two tracks I've picked from that, one of which was a single, um, did reasonably well but not a huge hit, and again seems to be missed off all the compilations, that's The Morning Papers, a, a lovely ballad about his relationship with Maite basically, uh, piano led at the start, moving on to guitar. Prince does ballads better than anybody. He does most things better than anybody, but ballads particularly, he does better than anybody, and this is a classic of the genre. Uh, the other track is his, 
highlighting maybe one of his other big sides. Matt is his funky side, his dance side. Matt's the Max. Uh, again, it's just fun and funky. That's why, I, you know, I like to listen to that. And it's the sort of tracks that didn't really get released as singles. You know, it's sort of the poppier and rockier stuff that became the singles and a few ballads. And then the fun and funky stuff, the sort of album tracks and B-sides. And the Max from the Love Symbol, Symbol, whatever you want to call it, album, is one of those, and I love it. Then, following that album, he released his first Greatest Hits compilation, which was uh, released in three ways. So it's referred to as the Hits for B-sides, because there is one version which had two discs of hits and then a disc of B-sides, or cassette, or album, I think it was on vinyl as well. Um, so that's the hits for B-sides. Um, then they also released the two hits CDs as separate CDs, Hits 1 and Hits 2. Um, and on the hits albums, there was four new tracks. There was a live recording of Nothing Compares to You. There was... There was Mind Has Gone Completely Blank. What was the other one on the first CD? My second CD, it was Peach and Power Fantastic. What was on my first one? I'm going to have to, because this is going to bug me. I'll whiz through this. Pope! Pope. You know that? Don't need to look it up. Uh, Power... Fantastic was on the hits one. Is that right? I think. Memories. No, Power Fantastic was on the B-sides. Uh, it was Pope and Peach. Yeah, it was Pope and Peach on the hits two. And on the hits one, it was the live version of Nothing Compares to You with Rosie Gaines. And it was... Pink Cash. You see, it's all P's. That's right. Okay. Right. Okay, we're there. So, on the hits one, there was Nothing Compares to You live with Rosie Gaines co-lead vocals and Pink Cashmere. On disc two, there was Pope and Peach. And on the B-sides, there was Power Fantastic. Got it. Oh, okay. Right. So, the track I'm choosing of those is Peach. It was a single. It was quite a big hit. But again, it's, it's after... That it's not been reused. Um, it's similar to Cream in that it's Prince in um, sort of T-Rexy, Mark Boloney, Boogie type music mode. Uh, again, it's a fun little song about Maite. Excellent guitar work. Um, yeah, Peach. Then we get on to the Come album which is an underrated classic in my opinion. It was recorded at the same time as the Gold Experience album and the tracks kept sort of swapping and changing between the two. But in the end, it turned into a great little album, as I say, an underrated classic. Um, the title track, Come, which is something like 18 minutes long, is brilliant. Um, pheromone, Space... I could pick practically anything, Race, Let It Go was the hit-ish hit single from it, uh, which 28 or something like that, I think. Um, but yes, the tracks I'm going to pick are Dark, which is a ballad, again, a uh, very old-school soul ballad, amazing vocals on it, beautiful song. Uh, it was an alternative version of it. it was released on the Crystal Ball album as So Dark, which is also good, but I prefer the Come version. Um, the track 29 of my, of my 60, uh, also from Come, is Papa. Uh, it's a song about being abused by a father. Uh, Prince claims it's not autobiographical, uh, but look at Purple Rain. He was abused by his father in that which was supposedly based on, roughly, on Prince's life, so you do have to wonder if there was something there. Um, Rumour is it was possibly his stepdad who used to hit him, rather than, his, rather than John L. Nelson, his father. Who knows? We'll probably never find out. But yeah, Papa, 
it's a slow build up a story of a child being abused and then it sort of rocks out at the end great little song papa okay 30 of 60 that is from my favorite print album the gold experience initially i had uh six tracks or five five or six tracks from that in my list but i've had to whittle it down to get to the 60. uh so first of all i'm gonna go for now now is wonderful it's just again another fun funky uh, chanty type song I just love it now uh, track 31 is ballad yeah I suppose it's a ballad uh, shy beautiful guitar work acoustic guitar work on this and a nice little story of it uh, sort of an underrated song from the album I think that's shy then I'm also going to go for the album opener, Endorphin Machine. A good rocky, typical Prince number. Uh, great opener. He opened the live experience tour with it. And it just rocks like a mother. Uh, and then my favourite, my joint favourite Prince song with Bambi uh, is the title, more or less the title track from the Gold Experience, and that's Gold. It was a single, it was a hit single, it reached number five, I think. Um, again, it's just one of these tracks that sort of got lost over time. It's played occasionally on my local radio station, which is nice. But it is just, let's say, it's my joint favourite song of Prince's. It's, if you haven't heard it, it's sort of an anthem Purple Rainy type track. Um, but when I went to see the live experience on March 5th, 2005, at Wembley Arena. Um, this was before the Gold Experience. He was having the trouble with Warner Brothers and they wouldn't release the Gold Experience. So he went on tour and played most of it live and he ended the shows with Gold and I came out with my hair standing on end and I've just loved that track ever since. It's just genius. Okay, track 34 is from the Chaos and Disorder album and it's the title track. Chaos and Disorder. Uh, it's a song that actually comes out of the jamming on Peach on the Act 2 tour. Uh, at the end of that he used to go into a riff, uh, quite a simple do 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 riff and that sort of developed now into the song Chaos and Disorder. It's an album most people dismiss, I like it a lot. Uh, Particularly Chaos and Disorder, I like it there. I'm one of the few people who like Right the Wrong. Uh, I will at the end, I think it's called. That's... No, oh, no, not I will. That's that's for Beatles. Um, had You? Whatever it's called, the last track, which is... And ends up with Fuck You. Uh, yeah, so it's an album I really like, and I say my favourite track on it is... Oh, Xanali. I near, very nearly put this on there. Xanali's great little blues track, but... It's not in my 60. Uh, the only track that is is Chaos and Disorder, which is number 34 out of 60. Now we move on to Emancipation, which was a triple album, which made it very difficult to choose just a couple of songs from it. How many have I gone for in the end? Yeah, I've just two and two and a bit um, from Emancipation. Lots I could have chosen, but the ones that I really, really loved uh, from a third disc is Sleep Around, which is Prince doing dance music and proper, you know, electronic beep 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 type music. Uh, fun lyrics. Uh, he, he did perform it live on the um, him, Jam of the Year tour as well. So it's one he obviously enjoyed. Yeah, again, it's a track I don't really hear talked about much, but it's one I really like. And that's Sleep Around from Disc 3 of Emancipation. Uh, from Disc 2 of Emancipation, aka the Soppy Disc. Um, I'm going for friend, lover, sister, mother, wife. Uh, can't really say too much about this one because it reminds me of somebody from my past, let's put it that way. But it's a beautiful ballad dedicated to Maite. And then the third track I'm going for, I'm going to go for the live version, which was released on the NYC cassette single. Uh, and it's a live version of Face Down. Album version's great as well, but the live version just takes it to another level. Prince's bass work on it is brilliant. Uh, this is Prince rapping. Uh, 
it was released sort of as a single as well, Face Down. It was, I think it was in, in certain territories or promo only, but it did have proper release and a video recorded for it. It's a sweary track. It's one of Prince's last sweary tracks. Um, but yeah, brilliant, funky, funny song, Face Down. But like, again, let's say the live version from the NYC single. Track 38, moving on to Crystal Ball, which was an album, uh, three CDs of outtakes, you know, previously unreleased tracks from a vault. Um, we won't go into problems with ordering and distribution and uh, track selection in this video. That's for another video in another time in the future. But uh, also, as part of it, it was a, a new album, The Truth and Kama Sutra, which is a ballet that Prince wrote for Maite. Uh, there's nothing in this list from Kama Sutra. I've got a track, two tracks from The Truth coming up. But from Crystal Ball, I'm going to go for Rupop Go To Zipper, which has long been a favourite of mine, ever since I first heard it in the film Showgirls, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, it's Prince doing reggae, uh, only the second time really after Blue Light from a Symbol album. Again, it's it's just funky and sexy and a reggae type song and a favourite of mine. Then uh, the live version of Days of Wild that's on Crystal Ball. Days of Wild is was the great lost song from a Gold Experience. He played it live all the time. It featured in the um, Gold Experience. What was it called? The Beautiful Experience uh, film that he made for TV. And everybody thought it was going to be the standout track on the album. Then when the album came out, it wasn't on there. And he pulled it from it quite late. Uh, according to Maite, he had other plans for it. Don't really know what they were because it's subsequently only been released as the live version on Crystal Ball. And then also uh, a, a different live version was um, given to attendees of one of his celebrations at Paisley Park. But it's just one of his best songs of the era. Again, a funky, fun song, Prince Doom, doing pr what Prince does best. And then I'm also going to choose from Crystal Ball uh, 18 and Over, which is technically a remix of Come, but apart from the backing, it's totally different. Uh, it's a rap, uh, basically about sex, as a lot of Prince's work is. But yeah, I really love it, and it's a track that I always find myself singing to myself or rapping to myself anything can prompt it but yeah 18 and over from i think it was on the third disc of crystal ball and yeah as i say also included in the crystal ball set was the truth which was a largely acoustic but not entirely album a great lost album in many ways uh many people regard it as one of his best i'm going to go for don't play me which is a proper bluesy acoustic song uh, which was released sort of as a single but didn't worry the charts. As I say, it's just a, a, a good blues song. And then I'm also going to pick the last track, which is Welcome to the Dawn. I first heard this track on a promo cassette that was given away in... I think it might have been Borders in the US. It was a cassette um, with Holy River on one side from uh, Emancipation and then Welcome to the Dawn on the B side and I managed to get a copy sent over to me via trading with somebody on the internet back in 1990 whatever it was, 7-ish um, and I loved the track straight away it's a, again it's an acoustic-y track quite slow uh, Prince's vocals are treated a bit on it which is something different from usual yeah, it's just a track I love. Uh, okay, moving on to a track, to an album that I initially forgot and had to go back, and that's why I ended up losing tracks from Gold Experience. But it's an album I love. Uh, it's another of Prince's, it was the albums he was releasing, releasing to fulfil his contract with Warner Brothers. Um, so um, Chaos and Disorder was one that was credited as Songs from a Vault. And this went further and was actually called The Vault, Old Friends for Sale. Um, and Old Friends for Sale, the track, is the first one I'm going to choose from that. It was a much bootlegged song, 
that initially Prince recorded after Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis uh, were fired from the time and it was the song he wrote in his anger if you like that but it's, it's a, actually a slow ballad um, but just how people let you down and then he re-recorded it a couple of times with slightly different lyrics, less personal and one of these um, was released on Old Friends for Sale, The Vault it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful song as is a track that initially he gave to Joe Cocker and Joe Cocker's version is very good but um, Prince's version is Prince's version and that's five women and it's a story of five women who the singer dated and it's a, a bluesy, rocky as you would expect from a track that Joe Cocker did track but it's a track I love um, when Joe Cocker died I posted his version on Facebook and lots of people commented on how much they loved it without knowing that it was a Prince song Okay then, we move on to Pretty Man from Rave Unto The Joy Fantastic which was a hidden track at the end of it. Um, I love the Rave album, most of the tracks I really enjoy. Well, all the tracks I really enjoy, really. Um, but I think the standout track on there is probably Pretty Man. It's a song that could, he could almost have been writing for the time. It's very Morris Day-esque. Um, song about how he's a pretty man. Uh, really fun. He performed it live a few times as well. Yeah, great track. And then from the same album, sort of, because Rave Unto The Joy Fantastic was the proper release. And then through his music club online, he released Rave Into The Joy Fantastic, which had slightly different versions of the songs, a few different mixes, um, and also stuck in an extra track, which was a track that fans had been clamouring for, uh, in 98, he performed a gig at the Café de Paris in London and uh, an edited version of that was broadcast on Channel 4 entitled Beautiful Strange and it was um, also included as part of a package was an interview he did with Mel B at Paisley Park and at the start of that he can be seen singing and playing um, as he records, allegedly um, the start of this song, Beautiful Strange, and everybody fell in love with this song straight away and we couldn't get hold of it. So he stuck it on Rave Into The Joy Fantastic and it's just beautiful. It's a guitar-y ballad, bit bluesy, uh, again bit of treatment on his voice but just Prince doing what Prince does best. Okay, three quarters of the way through, track 47 out of 60 and we move on to another favourite Prince album of mine, and that's The Rainbow Children. Uh, an album that some people have poo-pooed uh, because of the Jehovah's Witness influence on it, and it certainly is very prevalent in the lyrics, and there's possibly ha hints of anti-Semitism in there as well, which obviously is wrong, full stop. Um, so I can't condone that, but the album as a whole probably musically Prince's best. Uh, the band he had with him were great musicians um, and it's slightly jazz influenced but not in a off-putting way as much as I love jazz actually um, but it's sort of got that musicianship behind it um, and the tracks I'm going to pick from that are 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3 which again lyrically don't necessarily agree with but it's funky as hell so that's why that is in there and the everlasting now which again is another really funky track um it's more or less closes the album both tracks he, he would perform live subsequently yeah love both those tracks but i do recommend you give the album a listen you can just sort of switch off to the lyrics a bit then he released an album at people had huge hopes for it was called One Night Alone and it was allegedly just Prince and a piano playing songs um, as it is when you listen to it you can tell it has been there are overdubs and a few of the tracks have extra instruments as well so it's not quite what it was made out to be people were hoping for an album similar to there's a, a bootleg that 
that's long been circulating, normally called intimate moments or a variation on that, which is just Prince at a piano jamming on songs. There's a 20 odd minute version of a track called Purple Music and various other songs he plays about with on there and it is literally just him and a piano vamping. And that's what people were hoping for from One Night Alone, the album, but it wasn't quite that. Um, the track I'm going to pick from that is actually one of the more developed songs that um, isn't just him and a piano and it's Pearls Before the Swine, but that's a, it's a beautiful pop song, basically, um, which has been lost because the album, it was given away to members of the NPG Music Club and then it was also included in the, um, it ain't, no, what's it called? The One Night Alone, One Night Alone Live box set. So I think I've actually got two copies of it. Uh, and now goes for lots of money. So it's quite hard to track down. Not sure if it was one of the albums that was released on Tidal or not. But if you can find it, Pearls Before the Swine is the track I recommend. His cover of Case of You is great on it as well, but being a cover, I haven't included it. Uh, moving on to the live box set. It was two discs. Yeah, two discs from a main sort of compilation of shows from the main One Night Alone tour, which is his, possibly his best tour. I saw it three nights in a row in London uh, in October 2003, was it? Might be wrong. And also saw sound checks each of those days and an after show after the third night, so seven gigs of one sort or the other in three days, which was fantastic. Um, then the third CD was uh, recordings from after shows called It Ain't Over and the track I'm going to choose and anybody who knows this album probably knows what I'm going to choose now is the recording of the Graffiti Bridge track Joy in Repetition. Joy in Repetition is one of Prince's best songs full stop. It's I can't imagine anybody else recording it. It's just such a Prince song. Slow, hypnotic um, rocky storytelling ballady type song. I don't know how to describe it without playing it to you. But the version on uh, It Ain't Over, oh, it's just sublime. Uh, there are no other words. It is just magnificent. Okay, following this, he released a couple of instrumental albums. Uh, first of which was Expectation, which is a series of tracks, sort of jazzy tracks, um, all beginning with the letter X. Unfortunately, it was originally going to be called Xenophobia, and the title track Xenophobia he would play live on the One Night Alone tour, and it is wonderful, and I would quite easily have stuck it in Miss 60. But then he dropped it from the album. Don't know why. So there's nothing on here from Expectation. It's a great jazzy type album. So if you like jazz, it's it's sort of poppy jazz. It's not it's not bitches brew. It's more um, Amandla. If you know your Miles Davis, if you don't, that will mean nothing to you. Uh, so yeah, there's nothing from expectation. The men he followed that up with another uh, jazz album called News: North, East, West, and South. It's four tracks: North, East, West, and South. Um, each of which was about twenty minutes long, I think. Um, again, it's fun, it's, you know, it's a good album if you like that sort of thing, which I do, but it's not one that I would recommend to a casual fan. Again, I think it goes for a lot of money. Um, cha -ching. Okay, so then he sort of re-entered public consciousness with a musicology album. Um, great album, possibly his last really great album, certainly the last one for about 10 years. Um, the title track's brilliant, uh, and then uh, Life of a Party's excellent, so it's Dear Mr. Man, it's, it's a really good album. Uh, tracks I'm going to pick are Cinnamon Girl, which was released as a single but didn't do anything. Um, it's a track about um, how Muslims were being treated after 9-11 and is still very relevant today, I think. But it's a very fun pop, pop rock, sort of Raspberry Beret-ish in tone um, song. And then the track that closes the album, which is Reflection, which is just a beautiful ballad. 
um, guitar based. Did a wonderful version with Wendy, of Wendy and Lisa fame, on guitar on, I want to say the Tavis Smiley show, but I might be wrong with that. Um, but yeah, that's just a beautiful classic Prince guitar based ballad. Uh, then moving on, he released a couple of albums that were compilations of tracks he'd released through the NPG Music Club a few years previously. Uh, the Chocolate Invasion and The Slaughterhouse. Uh, I haven't included anything from those. Best tracks on there I like. There's no tracks on there I don't like. I had those out those tracks as individual tracks from the MPG Music Club so I'm not used to listening to those albums as albums um, but none of the tracks on there are just wow you must check this out tracks as I say there's some good tracks on there but I, none really that would make that this 60. Also he released at that time C Note which um, again is a compilation of tracks that were released through the MPG Music Club uh, they were four instrumental soundcheck tracks from Copenhagen, Nagasaki or somewhere that's similar to that in Japan. <sighs> Might be Oslo, can't remember what the O stands for. Or the T, not doing very well here, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, so they were tracks named after those four places. So, but begin with C, N, O and T. And then the E stood for the track that I'm going for, which was Empty Room. Empty Room is another track that was recorded years, 85-ish uh, I think, and was much bootlegged and was a huge fan favourite. And then all of a sudden he started playing it a couple of times uh, in the sound checks, and I think a couple of times, yeah, and he even played it during the shows. Uh, I, think, I think he played it once in London. But it's a beautiful, guitar-y, anthemic almost. Um, he re-recorded it in 94-ish um, and actually filmed a video for it which they played before the live experience shows in 95. But yeah, this was um, a live recording that he played. I, I think it was from a sound check on, that, on the One Night Alone tour. And it's, it's just a beautiful song. Um, it makes me cry nowadays listening to it, knowing he's gone, but it is just wonderful. Uh, the proper follow-up to Musicology was 3121, which is a very good album, not quite up there in Musicology, and it's the start of where all the albums started to sound the same. So any track on basically anything between Musicology and Plectrum Electrum not including Plectrum Electrum, so that's, um, well, you'll see, Planet Earth, Lotus Flower, MPLS Sound 2010. They're all sort of interchangeable and could quite easily be on each other. It's sort of the mould that Musicology made, the other albums would fit, if that makes sense as an analogy. I think you know what I mean. Uh, 3121 was very good. Um, first track I'm going to choose was a single, but again, didn't do much. Um, that's Black Sweat. Very funky song, reminiscent of Kiss, the video is very reminiscent of Kiss as well, um, but with a bit more music in it, Kiss is very stripped back. Um, but yeah, Black Sweat, great funk tune. Then the other one is a track that I don't hear many people love, but I adore, and that's The Dance. It was originally recorded and released um, through the MPG Music Club and was on, I think it was a Chocolate Invasion compilation. But it was completely re-recorded for 3121 and it's more of a... Oh... When I say a dance feel, I don't mean a... Who's dance? I mean a... Dance. Um, so I think it's in waltz time, which I love waltz time. Or is it tango? But I love waltz time, which is why I love Power Fantastic, which isn't on that list, but it's a great track. Um, actually, it's more of a tango than a waltz. But um, it's just beautiful, hypnotic, you know, uh, if I was going to go on Strictly Come Dancing, it's one of the tracks I'd love to dance to, let me put it that way. Um, so yes, The Dance from 3121. Track 56, we're nearly there. Uh, track 56 
is from Planet Earth, which is the album that was given away on the Earth tour for 21 nights in London, and was also given away with the Daily Mirror. He says, no, Planet Earth was the mail. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to buy the Daily Mail to get it. God, I've never felt right since. Uh, do any Daily Mail readers watching? Stop! Okay, uh, Chelsea Rogers from Planet Earth is another fun, funky... Uh, it's the highlight of that album for me. Guitar's great as well, but um, yeah, it's just... It's a song about a model called Chelsea Rogers, and it's just a very Prince funk song. dancey type. It's brilliant. Uh, then, next sort of release was a triple album. It was Lotus Flower, uh, Minneapolis Sound or MPLS Sound, however you want to call it, and then Elixir by Bria Valente, who was his, his current protégé at the time. Um, I actually love a Bria Valente album, of the three, it's the one I prefer, um, which again isn't a popular admission. I've not chosen anything from Lotus Flower or MPLS Sound on this. There's tracks on there I, I like. Um, his cover of Crimson and Clover uh, is great. And there's, there's, there's a few other tracks that I, I do enjoy. But again, there's just no real standout tracks. Nothing that hasn't been done better on 3121 or Musicology. Uh, much can be said the same for 2010, which was released through the Daily Mirror. Um, which is slightly better than the mail. Um, I actually got hundreds of copies of that CD because by that time I worked somewhere that sold newspapers and I had all the unsold copies. So I've got loads of copies of that. Uh, but yeah, 2010, again, it just fits that mould, as I said. But I have chosen one track from it. It's the bonus track at the end, the hidden track. Uh, it's called Lay Down. And it is just a fu another fun, funky track. Um, it contains a line straight from the heart of Minnesota, here comes the purple Yoda, uh, which has been used to describe Prince ever since, the purple Yoda, which is brilliant. And it shows Prince can take the mick out of himself. Um, but yeah, it's easily the best track on that album. Then, for the first time ever, we had a long gap between albums. And finally, he came back with two albums released on the same day. Uh, the first of which is Plec was Plectrum Electrum, which was Prince with Third Eye Girl, his rock band made up of three women. It's an album I really enjoy. It is mainly Prince's rocky, guitar-heavy side, which I love, and is the side that got me into Prince, as I said, uh, through Let's Go Crazy. Um... Lots of tracks I really like on it, but I'm actually going to go through an inst the instrumental on it, the title track, Plectrum Electrum. I just, it's just something about it that I really love. Again, it's just rocky, instrumental, beautifully played by all of the band. Uh, the penultimate track for my 60 is from Artificial Age, which was the album that came out at the same time and was a Prince solo album, although for um, Third Eye Girls, Third Eye Girl, Girls, um, all featured on the album, as did a few other people. Uh, it's an album that received lots of praise when it came out, but it's never quite clicked with me. Um, people nowadays cite it, um, but it was Prince knowing he was dying. Um, I'm not convinced, but because of that, I've found it difficult to actually listen to it again since. I've sort of listened, I had... Um, Alexa shuffling Prince songs and a few of those came up on it. Um, I've just waited as I might have triggered her. Here's a station you might like. Upbeat indie. Uh, told you. Amazon Music. Alexa, stop. And quite a few tracks from um, Artificial Age came up on it. And as individual tracks, it was fine. I could listen to it. But as an album as a whole, I might struggle still. It's been two years. It's still, still difficult. Uh... But yeah, the track I'm going to choose, anyway, from that is Breakdown. Again, any fan will probably guess that that's one I was going to choose. It's another beautiful Prince ballad, full of emotion, amazing vocals. Prince, 
Prince's ballad side at its best. Okay, then his penultimate album he released was Hit and Run, Volume 1. I've not chosen any tracks from this. There's a few good tracks on it, but the production's terrible. He hand handed the production over to Joshua Welton, uh, the husband of his drummer, Hannah. Um, and it just doesn't work. As I say, there's a few good tracks on it, but it doesn't sound like Prince, really. Which is a shame. Um, but then he followed it up with Hit and Run 2 which was more proper Prince tracks. Um, there's some good stuff on there. And I'm going to choose what is the final track on the album and therefore was the final track, I think, released in his lifetime. Um, and that's Big City. Again, it's another fun, funky, upbeat. Uh, it's quite old school, in a way. Um, it could be a sort of 60s band playing it. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a track he, he played live quite regularly before its release even. Um, and it's, yeah, I'd say it's just fun and funky. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, as you've seen, these are only tracks um, released by Prince or the symbol. Um, doesn't include tracks by the New Power Generation um, or any associated artists over time or anything like that. I might do a video in the future of favourite associated artist tracks including the MPG. Um, but yeah this is just tracks released by Prince and as I said at the start it's only officially released tracks. If we were going to include bootleg tracks it would be impossible to keep it to 60. But yes okay thank you for watching. Um, as I say I've been up for hours so that's why I'm all uh, so sorry about that. But I wanted to get this done and out on his 60th birthday. If this is the first time you've watched my videos, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to subscribe, like, comment. Uh, if you're an existing subscriber, view regular viewer, who are more used to my shorter merch videos, I'm not going to be doing too many massive videos like this, but this is one I needed to do. Uh, and if you've stayed this long, well done. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.